In this video, I am going to walk you through my thought process as I develop and critique a central question for a hypothetical study. That way, you can follow my process to develop your own qualitative research questions and get your study approved, funded, or get the highest mark possible on your assignment. Taking the time to thoughtfully consider your qualitative research questions could make or break your research proposal. This critical step ensures your study is congruent and well-designed to discover what you are really looking for. You should already have a purpose drafted, something like, the purpose of this grounded theory will be to develop an understanding of the process a nursing student experiences when developing confidence in their clinical skills. Now, think of the broadest question that would answer the purpose. The central question needs to include the central phenomenon in your study. A central phenomenon is the concept your study is exploring. In my example, the central phenomenon is confidence. The question needs to restate key elements of your purpose, but be more specific. It should include the population and central phenomenon. It should also begin with what or how, because this open-ended language is more congruent with qualitative methodology. Why questions should not be used for qualitative studies because they suggest that you are looking for a cause and effect relationship. Why questions are best answered by quantitative research, which is designed to test cause and effect relationships. Use qualitative language to tell the reader if you want to discover, generate, explore, identify, or describe something. I recommend writing the question several ways. This activity promotes your thinking about what it really is you want to research. Some considerations for a central question include, how would nursing students describe confidence? What does it mean for nursing students to feel confident? What is confidence for nursing students? How do nursing students develop confidence? What is the meaning of confidence to nursing students? What happened in the development of nursing student confidence? After drafting these questions, I would think about which one is best and if the wording needs to change to get at what I want to know. Notice how the question wording helps to guide the selection of the best methodology. Any of these questions could be used for research, but the best way to answer each one would be different. It is a good idea to use wording in your question that clearly points towards the methodology you are using. That removes any doubt for the reader that your study is congruent. Do I really want to look at how confidence is developed? If so, grounded theory fits. However, if I'm more interested in how students describe confidence, maybe I would be better off with another methodology. As worded, I would consider a descriptive design, but if I wanted to get at the essence of the experience, I would work on question wording that more clearly points to phenomenology. I would also think about if conducting a grounded theory is realistic and practical for me. If not, is there another more pragmatic approach I can use to discovery that fills a different gap in knowledge? Creswell and Poth suggest having only one central question, but I have seen others suggest limiting a study to two. I agree that it's best to have only one central question, otherwise it complicates the research design. If you are new to research, keep the study simple but meaningful. Stick to one central question. Once you pick the question you think best reflects what you want to know, it is time to refine it. Now consider if your question is too broad, too focused, or has assumptions in it. It is common for questions to start off with one of these issues. If I was going to pick a question from this example to research, I would first do a brief literature review to see generally what the gaps are. Then I could narrow down my choice to a question that fills a gap, is pragmatic, interesting, and meaningful. I hope this video has helped you identify the central question for your study. If it has been helpful, please like and share this video. In the next video, we can break down the central question into sub-questions. If you want to be notified as new videos are uploaded, please subscribe. You may want to click on the little bell beside the subscribe button to choose whether you want to receive notifications all the time or occasionally. Comment below to let me know how I can help you.